Okay, um, let's get started. Uh, first, it's just a quick announcement. If you do have cell phones or other electronica, please silence them, turn them off, thanks. Um, welcome uh, to the panel uh, on learning from the Court de Ré, Moments in Mediterranean Environmental History. Uh, we have three uh, wonderful papers today uh, by freshly minted PhDs in, uh, fresh, uh, in French environmental history. Um, so bravo for that. Uh, I think environmental history is a subject that's going to receive increasing attention in the years ahead for obvious reasons. It's of nor enormous significance, so it's really lovely to see a new generation uh, coming up uh, who are who are, who, which is taking it very seriously. So I thank the panelists for that. Um, we will start today with uh, Joseph Horan, who received his PhD in 2013 in history from Florida State University and is currently an assistant professor at the Colorado School of Mines. His dissertation, which examined cotton cultivation in France and Italy, uh, was awarded honorable mention in the for the Rachel Carson Prize, and he has published several articles, including a recent one in the journal French History. Today, Joseph will be speaking uh, on the Pyrenean cotton boom, acclimatization, and modernization in Napoleonic France. Joseph. All right, well, thank you, uh, Michael, for the introduction and uh, for Susan for agreeing to provide the comments and to my fellow panelists as well. I don't know if Tip Reagan is here, but uh, thanks to him for organizing everything and thanks to everyone for coming. I uh, kind of organized the panel around the idea of uh, la courte durée, so I'll try to keep my paper within la courte durée. <laughs> and for those watching at home, I was not provided access to the makeup room that I asked for, so usually I look better on film, so that was not my fault. So in March of 1808, Napoleon's interior ministry dispatched a Maltese native named Paolo Savonati to the Department of Pyrenees Orientales, situated along France's Mediterranean border with Spain. O uh, across the border, French troops were seizing control of Spanish cities at that very moment, initiating the six-year carnage of the Peninsular War. Savonati's mission was not directly uh, related to the conquest of Spain, but nonetheless, uh, his activities were a vital part of Napoleon's grand strategy for domination of Europe. The interior minister, Emmanuel Crete, outlined the task uh, assigned to Savonati in a letter to the prefect of Pyrenees Oriental, explaining that, quote, the emperor desires by every means possible to know the degree of success with which the cultivation of cotton might be practiced in France. Savonati had been chosen to supervise these efforts based on his experience with cot cotton cultivation in his native island, Malta, and Crete directed the prefect to, quote, support with all of your power this useful work. Crete was equally empath uh, empathetic, uh, emphatic in his instructions to Savonati, engaging the Maltese to, quote, devote all of your efforts to ensuring the success of this important operation. The significance that Crete attached to Savonati's efforts in Pyrenees Oriental was based upon their role in the continental system, the grand strategy for the defeat of Great Britain that Napoleon had initiated the previous year. Recognizing the impossibility of achieving a successful invasion of Britain, Napoleon implemented a ban on all British commerce uh, anticipating that this policy would provoke the economic ruin of his most persistent foe. Yet Napoleon and his advisors also recognized the difficulties posed by European demand for British merchandise and most notably the cheap cotton textiles produced in British factories. Napoleon hoped that the introduction of cotton cultivation to the south of France and to the areas of Italy that had recently fallen under his control would create a convenient source of raw material for French factories, allowing the French cotton industry to occupy the position in European markets previously held by its rivals across the channel. So if the continental system was the stick with which Napoleon hoped to batter perfidious Albion, the acclimatization of cotton represented the carrot 
that would help reconcile the peoples of Europe to French domination. When Savinazzi arrived in Perpignan, Napoleon's acclimatization project was entering its second year. Already in 1807, the Interior Ministry's Bureau of Agriculture had distributed several kilograms of cotton seeds to selected departments in the south of France, instructing the local administrators to solicit the participation of landowners willing to consecrate a portion of their fields to the crop. While this program succeeded in attracting the participation of hundreds of individuals, some of whom did indeed manage to successfully produce cotton, in early 1808, the Bureau of Agriculture recommended adding a new element to the project. In addition to promoting cotton cultivation on private estates, the Bureau proposed to, quote, increase the probability of success by carrying out its own experiments on land belonging to the government. Experiments that would be entrusted to, quote, men experienced with this type of crop. In this context, the Bureau came to rely upon the knowledge and expertise of a group of Maltese who had collaborated with the French during Napoleon's takeover of the island in 1798 and who had been forced to seek refuge in France when the island was taken back uh, by the British in 1800. Cotton was already an established part of Maltese agriculture and a number of these refugees had acquired direct exper experience with the crop prior to their exodus from the island. Although the precise details of Savinati's background are difficult to discern, documents generated during the French occupation suggest that he was a ship owner and merchant. And it may have been in this context uh, that Savinati first acquired interest and knowledge of cotton cultivation. Whatever the case, Savinati demonstrated a usefulness to the administration in late 1807 with the manuscript on the introduction of cotton cultivation to the southern departments, in which he described in detail the cultivation of the crop as practiced in Malta. In the conclusion to the document, Savinati admitted that it would be difficult to, quote, conquer the empire of routine and persuade French farmers to take up the crop. But in a statement assuredly designed to appeal to the sensibilities of the Napoleonic regime, he appealed to the patriotic sentiments of those who, quote, seek to second the great and powerful vision of their august emperor. So a little bit of calculated flattery. Uh, as further proof, uh, in autumn of 1807, Savinati made arrangements with a contact in Barcelona for the acquisition of cotton seeds from Ibiza, uh, one of the uh, Balearic Islands, uh, and he placed these seeds at the disposition of the administration. Having demonstrated both a direct knowledge of cotton cultivation as well as a willingness to promote the interests of the regime, Savinati was a natural choice to direct one of the cotton plantations that the ministry determined to establish in 1808. Before examining in a little more detail his activities over the following six years, I want to consider the place of this ep episode in broader historical trends. At first glance, these experiments with cotton cultivation at the foot of the Pyrenees present a stark contrast with the major trends in global cotton cultivation that unfolded during the 19th century. As economic historian Sven Beckert has recently noticed, cotton production in the pre-modern era was typically organized at a local level, with cultivation and manufacturing taking place in close proximity. During the 19th century, however, European industrial development was characterized by a growing reliance on far-flung centers of cotton cultivation places, of course, uh, like the American South, and India. So viewed from this perspective, Savinati's experiments with cotton cultivation in Mediterranean France might be characterized as an atavistic legacy of an earlier era of cotton production, seeking to achieve cotton cultivation in proximity to French manufacturing centers rather than the type of far-flung, we might say globalized, trade networks that supplied cotton fibers to the mills of Napoleon's British rivals. So when viewed from the more immediate context of Mediterranean environmental history, Savinati's efforts also appear to be marginalized by pr uh, prevailing historiographical trends. Above all, studies of the interaction between humans and nature in the Mediterranean has been shaped by the influence of Fernand Brodel, who emphasized the importance of a perspective focused on trends that have unfolded over the longue durée of centuries or even millennia. 
And in this approach uh, has continued to exercise a strong influence on Mediterranean, in Mediterranean environmental history, inspiring studies by, among others, John McNeil, Peregrine Horton, and Nicholas Purcell, Farouk Tabak, and most recently, James McGregor. The approach pioneered bro by Brodel for, for the Mediterranean has also strongly influenced trends in historical inquiry more generally, and most recently in the form of a very forceful and strong argument for a long-term perspective articulated by Joe Gouldy and David Armitage in the History Manifesto. So when set against this tendency to focus on trends that unfolded over hundreds of years in the environmental history of the Mediterranean, a six-year experiment with cotton cultivation in the southern uh, corner of France seems to be nothing more than a brief episode overshadowed by the sweeping history of the longue durée. However, a closer look at this undertaking reveals, the sig reveals a deeper significance for our understanding of modern environmental history. In many ways, the most significant uh, aspect of this episode is the confidence in success that was regularly expressed by Savanati and those who backed his efforts. Viewed from the modern perspective, this faith in a cotton kingdom at the foot of the Pyrenees seems misplaced or even delusional. After all, in our minds, the fate of cotton cultivation in the modern era is firmly fixed to the plantations of the American South. Yet when Savanati's experiments are understood in the context of their era, they do not seem nearly so far-fetched. After all, the American cotton boom was only in its opening stages in 1808, and to Europeans, well accustomed to manipulating the global distribution of plants, the prospect of extending cotton cultivation to the south of France was hardly without precedent. Just three years before Savanati arrived in Perpignan, the influential Prussian naturalist Alexander von Humboldt marveled that, quote, unquiet and laborious man in traveling to the diverse corners of the world has forced a certain number of vegetables to inhabit all of the climates and all of the elevations. This outlook reflects a faith shared by many Europeans during the Age of Enlightenment, a worldview that stressed the capacity for humans to shape the natural environment in order to better suit their interests. The vision of a cotton cultivation in France was directly inspired by such confidence in human control over the environment uh, a closer look at Savonati's activities, therefore, offers the opportunity to examine in more detail the ways in which this mentality translated into a concerted effort to transform the European environment at the turn of the 19th century. Upon receiving his instructions, Savonati traveled from Paris to Perpignan and quickly devoted his energies to fulfilling the responsibilities entrusted in him by Crete. By, by mid-April of 1808, Savanati had completed the process of selecting locations on government-owned property, supervising the work necessary for uh, preparing the land for cotton cultivation, and had overseen the planting of the seeds. In early 1809, Savanati reported that the plantations of the previous year had, quote, uh, not corresponded to my hopes, explaining that one of the locations had produced only 20 kilograms of material, and the other had failed to produce any, because the plants had suffered much from cold weather and rain. I guess April in uh, Perpignan may be similar to April in Colorado. <laughs> nonetheless, as some of you may have learned to your surprise, I think. Uh, so nonetheless, Savanati emphasized that his cotton plants were perennial and had been, quote, very well conserved over the winter, leading him to hope for better results the following year. In late November of 1809, Savanati described yet again the negative effects of extremely strong rains uh, that had left a portion of his plantation absolutely covered with water for four days. And as a result, Savanati dispatched yet again only a small quantity of cotton. Uh, however, Savanati had also noticed an important difference between the Spanish cotton that constituted the majority of his seeds, which had generally failed, and a small quantity of seeds from Naples, which had developed more rapidly and had produced better results, leading him to conclude that, quote, if everything had been sown with the seeds from Naples, the harvest would have surpassed my expectations. Following this report, the Interior Ministry furnished Savanati with a larger quantity of Neapolitan seeds the following year. The trust 
that the administration placed in Savanati, despite the meager results of his initial efforts, was rewarded in the course of 1810. In July, Savanati reported that the cotton seeds he had received had, quote, completely succeeded up to this point, despite the effects of the great rains and hail, which had ravaged this department during the entire month of March. By October, Savanati was able to announce that, quote, the plants are of the greatest beauty. Uh, and in January of 1811, Savanati reported on the results of his harvest, announcing that he had obtained 200 kilograms of cotton, an outcome that confirmed that with, quote, seeds from Naples, this crop can be perpetuated and will become a source of wealth for the inhabitants. Savanati's success in the face of unfavorable conditions demonstrated the advantages of providing extensive and direct support to an individual with experience who could identify the best techniques or the best uh, specimens to use. In the following years, Savanati not only continued but expanded upon the success of 1810 and came closer to realizing the objectives of the project than any other participant. Significantly, Savanati's activities attracted a substantial degree of attention from the local population, providing tangible proof to them that acclimatization was feasible. In November of 1810, Savanati reported that his cotton field had been visited by, quote, up to 400 people who have come to see the beautiful view which the plantation offers at this moment. The whiteness of the cotton and the great quantity of open capsules are the object of their admiration, he boasted. The prefect of the department, Joseph Martin, confirmed Savanati's claims early in 1811, reporting to Paris both the success of the harvest in the Cotonnerie Imperiale and the fact that it had attracted the attention of, quote, the principal landowners of the country, who were, as a result, more inclined to undertake experiments of their own. Savanati's efforts in 1811 produced an even more impressive result, yielding 300 kilograms of cotton. Uh, and in early 1812, the prefect reported that he had spoken with many of those who had abandoned their own experience in the early years of the effort, uh, but explained that, quote, the example of the abundant harvest of 1811 has revived their attention. Uh, reports submitted confirmed a renewed interest. The total land area devoted to cotton in Pyrenees Oriental, which had dropped from 460 acres in 1808 to just 133 in 1810, uh, raised, uh, rose to uh, 315 the following year and to 400 acres in 1812 as Savanati's harvest helped to revive enthusiasm for the project. Uh, the results of 1812 proved uh, less satisfying, uh, which uh, the prefect uh, blamed on, quote, uh, unfavorable weather conditions that killed many of the young plants. Uh, but Martin explained that the plants had, that had survived the inclement conditions appeared weaker, although he noted that they were, quote, nonetheless very charged with cotton bowls. Uh, and reflecting on the experiment, Martin concluded that, quote, there is no doubt that the cotton plant is today acclimatized. Thus, while Martin was not entirely without hope when it came to extending cotton cultivation among the general uh, uh, population, uh, he also noted that, quote, in every household, there will be a desire to harvest enough cotton for the principal needs of the family. So he was uh, kind of scaling back the uh, objectives somewhat, but his expectations uh, were nonetheless um, very strong. Uh, Martin, Martin's uh, concerns about the difficulties of the landowners to devote large amounts of their uh, land to the crop were alleviated in early 1813 when Savanati informed the administration that an agent traveling on the area, uh, in the area on behalf of a Marseille uh, cotton, cotton firm, uh, commercial firm had observed uh, his harvest and had proposed to engage the Maltese to, quote, sow several fields for his firm, so beginning to attract investment. Uh, and Savanati predicted that, quote, the landowners of this department cannot fail in seeing this foreigner devote himself to this industry to be inspired by emulation, to emulation with this precious plant. And the Interior Ministry accepted the partnership that Savanati had formed, informing the, informing the prefect that it was perfectly acceptable for Savanati to continue his work as an agent of the central government while also engaging in, quote, other activities which have as their goal the propagation of cotton cultivation. 
Savinati continued his efforts in early 1813, and by July he'd reported to the Interior Ministry that he'd formed yet another arrangement with a merchant based in Perpignan for 300 acres of land to be quote, cultivated next year at his expense, while yet another local entrepreneur had requested uh, a similar partnership. These signs of growing interest in cotton cultivation validated the decision uh, to recruit Savinati, demonstrating that with sufficient support from the government, an expert in cotton cultivation could not only cultivate large quantities on his own, but also attract interest and emulation among the local population. To be sure, Savinati continued to face challenges related to the environment of the region. In August of 1813, officials dispatched by the prefect to observe the plantations uh, noted that, quote, the plants had been damaged by the cold and impetuous winds that occurred in the month of July, and that many plants had also, quote, been stricken by insects that burrow in the ground. Yet despite such setbacks, Savinati's efforts in 1813 produced yet another substantial harvest uh, and a further renewal of engagement in the project. In January of 1814, Savinati informed the Interior Ministry that he had harvested 400 kilograms of cotton, quote, of a very good quality, and that yet another local landowner had expressed desire to participate, offering 100 acres of good land for the experiment. So while the rapid spread of acclimatization envisioned by the regime at the start of the project had not immediately materialized, Savinati's success in Pyrenees Oriental during the final years of the experiment suggested that the state could still hope to generate interest in the undertaking. The Interior Ministry approved Savinati's request for funds to cover uh, yet another year of experiments in February of 1814, a sign of confidence that was even more notable considering that the administration had already decided to terminate support for similar efforts in other areas. So they were kind of focusing mainly on Savinati. Now in the end, this promise of support was never fulfilled by the regime, which by early 1814 was in the midst of its last desperate struggle for survival against the Allied invasion. Uh, but nonetheless, Savinati wrote Paris at the end of March to remind the ministry that the cotton seeds needed to be in the ground by mid-April, explaining that if he was not provided with the funds to cover his expenses, quote, it will be impossible for me to complete the planting. Paris fell shortly after Savinati dispatched his request and when the prefect wrote in late April to request further guidance on the matter from the provisional government, the new interior ministry responded by scrawling, quote, uh, abandon this crop at the margin of his letter. In June of 1814, an agronomist working for the government produced a report on the acclimatization project for the newly restored Bourbon regime. Sylvestre, the, uh, the agronomist, out singled out Savinati's success as the main reason why the Napoleonic regime, quote, did not believe it necessary to renounce all hope of propagating the cultivation of cotton, even in the final months of ex existence. The fall of Napoleon, however, had been followed by, quote, the happy reestablishment of our commercial relations, a development that made efforts to promote the acclimatization of cotton henceforth entirely useless. With French mills once again enjoying access to overseas cotton, the government saw no reason to pursue an enterprise quote, whose products have been too disproportionate uh, to the expenses that were occasioned. Although the outcome of these experiments was shaped by a wide range of environmental factors, it was ultimately geopolitics that proved to be the most decisive factor in terminating the experiment. The new government agreed to pay the expenses that Savinati had contracted and requested a definitive account of the undertaking uh, to provide, quote, a succinct and accurate summary to ensure that the results of your experiments are not lost to science. Savinati supplied this report, uh, and following a detailed account of his experiments, he argued that he had, quote, provided convincing proof that this plant can be naturalized to this department, supplying a product of the first and most beautiful quality. Savinati's contribution to the project was indeed outstanding, and while others managed to successfully obtain cotton from their fields, none were able to gain consistent results on the level of achieved by Savinati. Savinati's experiments in this corner of Mediterranean France were thus not without some success. 
and drawing upon his knowledge of the cotton plant and using cotton from various regions of the Mediterranean, Savinati was able to transform the lands provided into him into what the government called the Cotonnerie Imperiale, a state-sponsored cotton plantation designed to serve as the vanguard in the acclimatization of a crop that had never before been cultivated in this area. Having achieved this success, Savinati was able to attract the interest of investors, and with these outcomes in mind, it is worth briefly imagining what might have taken place had Savinati's unique accomplishments been duplicated across the entire area in which these experiments were carried out, uh, creating a vast cotton territory stretching from the Land of southwestern France to the Agro Romano of central Italy. Such success might have rapidly transformed the economic balance between France and Great Britain, providing for French cotton mills a secure source of raw material, more uh, easier to access than anything uh, that their counterparts across the channel could hope to enjoy. With inexpensive French-produced textiles flooding the markets of Europe, the smuggling networks that had effectively neutralized the intended effects of the continental system on the British economy would have been greatly reduced, and a major incentive for Napoleon's disastrous invasion of Russia thus removed from the picture. Having maintained his hegemony in Europe and secured French primacy in a crucial branch, branch of the modern economic system, Napoleon might be remembered today in a very different light. Historians, looking back on the course of events that had led to the successful creation of Napoleon's cotton kingdom, would likely mark this event as a sign of things to come, an early example of nature's submission to the combined forces of industry, science, and state power. In this context, it is significant that the Napoleonic acclimatization experiments never realized the ambitious expectations of their supporters, for the ultimate failure of this undertaking provides an important perspective on human interaction with nature in the modern era. While it is essential to recognize that this ambitious undertaking was made possible by the power powerful forces of modern industry, science, and centralized government, the fate of Napoleon's cotton kingdom serves as a valuable reminder that nature does not always submit passively to the will of conquerors. I think I, the clock did not quite submit passively to my presentation, so uh, sorry for running a little over.